What's up guys, on Maths here, and we're doing construction and loci today. Uh, this is not the easiest uh, topic to do uh, on computer, but we'll try our best. So, it says uh, construct a locus of points that are the same distance from points A and B. So basically, we need a straight line going down the middle here, but we need to show how we construct it. So if you just draw the line, it's probably going to be worth no marks. So the first thing you need to do is measure out your compass, and you need to make the compass uh, about three quarters of the distance between A and B. You don't need to measure it out with a ruler, just roughly three quarters of the way. The most important thing is it's um, over halfway, it has to be over halfway, um, and that it doesn't end up uh, being too big. So about three quarters distance is absolutely fine normally. So I'm going to try and do that. And what you have to do is just draw an arc, which is just a part of a circle. I'm going to try and do that here. Okay, that looks dodgy, but eh, it'll do. Okay, now without uh, changing the distance in your compass, so keep the compass exactly as it is, put the point down at B and do the same thing. So I'm going to try and do the same thing. There we go. And to finish off, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to connect the two intersections, which are here and here. And because the uh, <laughs> the glass I'm using to do this hasn't didn't st stay still very well, uh, mine's not going to be absolutely perfect, but yours will do. Yours will be when you draw it. So you should draw a straight line down here. So to get the marks, you need to leave your arcs. So it's arcs for marks. And let's just move this. Perfect. So you get marks for your arcs, so you need to make sure that the red and the blue line stay. Now obviously on yours you'll do it all in pencil, so they'll all be the same colour. But when I'm marking these, I'm looking for those arcs to get yourself the two marks. Okay, moving on to the Edexcel's offering. And we're asked here to draw a front elevation and a side elevation. So we're going to start off with the front elevation. And the front elevation will be this side here. And what we mean by front elevation is if you were perfectly lined up with that side, and we can see it's the front because it tells us it's the front here. Uh, if you were perfectly lined up with that side, what would you see? And this needs to be to scale because it says uh, in the question, use a scale of two centimeters to one meter. So let's have a look at how we're going to do this. So first thing is it's two meters tall. Now it says that two centimeters is one meter, which means one of those squares, it's in the centimeter grid, um, like it says in the question, it says here, it says centimeter grid. So we know they're one centimeter um, for each square. So one centimeter will be half a meter. So if it's two meters, it's gonna be four squares. So let's draw that like that. So four squares up. And we've got four squares across, like that. And it says it's half a meter up, which will be one square. It's one centimeter is half a meter. And then we just join it up. Always do this, the horizontal and verticals, and then leave the diagonal to the end. That's nice and easy. And that is our front elevation. And you could label it. I don't think you have to for this, but I will. So that's our front elevation. Okay, for our side elevation, uh, let's have a look. So for our side elevation, it's going to be this side here. But you will also see this part here. So you will see the kind of two rectangles. Because if you imagine you're completely square with this side so you're standing there and you're perfectly in line with it it's going to look like two rectangles so we'll do the bottom one first because uh, the bottom one's slightly easier so it's it's half um, half up and it's one across which will be two squares then half up that way and we draw a line there to show that there's kind of that corner there okay now we've got to work out how much further up it is. We need to do a bit of calculation here, it's not difficult. We went half a meter up here, and the full distance up is two meters. So it would be one and a half meters up, which will be three squares. So 
let's draw that in three squares and then obviously one meter across which is two squares and two those squares down and let's write inside and that is perfect now things to watch out for it might be tempting to kind of add some 3dness to it get some nice little 3d going on the second you do that you lose your marks simple as that um, also and uh, i'll show this in a different color this part here is normally quite important that you've got to show uh, like a step or a change um, in dimension and um, so if there's so this line oh, Get the right one. This line's equivalent to this line here. You've got to show that on your diagram. So the um, elevations or plans, uh, it doesn't ask for a plan here, but plan is just the same thing from above. The plans and elevations are always going to be two dimensional. Don't ever draw them as 3D. If the question says, draw a 3D representation of the shape shown by this plan and elevations, then fine, that will be 3D. But whenever you ask for a plan or elevation, it's always two dimensional. And always make sure you um, read what the scale is. So always make sure you read what the scale is to make sure you have the right dimensions. Normally one mark is for the correct general shape. So um, for the side elevation, if you draw uh, drew a rectangle, you'd get the first mark. But you'd have to get everything else um, to get the second mark. Okay, finally on to OCR's offering. And for OCR... We're given kind of a, a construction a construction loci kind of question, um, but it's based on kind of real world stuff. Uh, always an interesting question to do. Um, so it's talking about the fact that there's um, towns A, B, C. Uh, a, B represents a road between town A and B, and A, C represents a, town, a road between town uh, A and C. So you can see the diagram there. Um, and it wants us to construct, um, or it wants us to shade the region a shopping centre can be, given two kind of um, things we need to take into account. Into account that the shopping centre has to be less than 14 kilometres from town C, and that it needs to be uh, nearer to the road um, from A to B than the road from A to C. So I'm going to actually do the second one first, um, which is going to be easier for this. So I'm going to look at this one. So less than 14 kilometres from town C. Now, the important thing to realise here is there's a scale, and so we have to use the scale. Now, that's a bit difficult for me because I, I zoom out and zoom into these. So one centimetre isn't actually one centimetre on the A4 paper that your exam is printed on. Um, so I'm just going to pretend that this is uh, the correct measurement. And the correct measurement will be, uh, if it's 14 kilometres from town C, um, then we need to just to convert that into centimetres uh, based on the, on the diagram we have. So the scale is 1 centimetre represents 2 kilometres, so 14 kilometres will be represented by 7 centimetres. And so we're going to have 7 centimetres uh, from town C. Um, so that's going to be done by just drawing a circle around uh, town C at seven centimeters, simple as that. So I'm going to try and do this with my trusty thing here. And the thing with it is that actually it needs to be nearer to AB. Uh, than AC. So I don't need to draw the circle all the way around. I only need to draw it at the top. So let's draw that like this. Oh, hang on. Set it onto the right brush. Oh, keep sliding. It's just, I, I miss using a compass. I really do. <laughs> it's just the compass would destroy this uh, computer monitor. Okay, so we're pretending that's seven centimeters. No idea whether whether that's seven centimeters or not, but we'll pretend it is. Okay, now to do the next bit, um, we're basically um, bisecting this angle. We're just drawing a perfectly straight line. So what we're looking at doing for this next bit is drawing a line that's perfectly between the two of them, like so, okay? But you've got to do it accurately. And the way of doing it accurately is to follow these steps. So get your compass, and measure a distance again about three quarters of the distance uh, from A to B is, is absolutely fine uh, I'm going to do just just under that I'm going to do about half and that's fine too on this 
um, just it needs to be somewhere in the middle, um, and I think three quarters is normally normally a good good rule to do. And again, put it on the right brush. So just draw an arc there. So my compass points are A, and I'm just drawing the arc on the right hand side. Then from each of those intersections, so what I mean is this part here and this part here, where your arc has crossed the lines, you're going to put your compass point down again, and you're going to draw another arc over here. So I'm at this point here, I'm drawing an arc on the right hand side, I'm going to the other point here, and I'm drawing an arc up here. Simple as that. Then what I want to do is get my ruler and I want to join A with where those lines overlapped, like that. And that's full marks, that's what I'll be looking for as an examiner. I'll be looking for all the construction lines there. Now to finish off, I need to shade the region. Well, it needs to be within the red circle because that's less than 14 kilometers away from town C. And the other piece of information tells us it needs to be nearer to the road from A to B than the road from A to C. So anything um, below the blue line that I've just drawn is closer to line AC, so it's, it can't be there. So the only place left is this part here, which I'm going to shade in green. Obviously, this is all done in pencil for you. Okay, so that's within 14 kilometers from town C within that circle, and it's closer to line AB, uh, to road AB than road AC. And that's it. Now, when you do this, say if you printed this out from OCR's website, and you sit and do it, yours, might, yours probably will look radically different to mine. I'd imagine the circle from C is way bigger, and that's absolutely okay, because I haven't measured as exactly seven centimeters. I have no idea what that is because obviously I scale this. So if yours looks different, as long as the arcs look the same, if they're in different places, like the, the blue one should look identical, but if the red circle's much bigger on yours, then, then you've probably done the right thing. Okay, looking at question B, it says, explain why the region found in part A may not be an appropriate site for the shopping center. Now the key words here are may not. Not aren't, but may not. And this is when you put your creative uh, brain on, which you don't use much in maths, but you, they, they're encouraging you to think outside the box and start using your imagination a lot more on the exams now. And that's not a bad thing because um, there's a kind of fear from the exam boards that um, teachers just teach you do this do this do this and you've got your brain switched off and you're just remembering methods and you're not really thinking about why or you know uh, implications of those methods you're just following steps um, and so questions like this kind of test the student's ability to understand what it is that they're doing um, with this answer this question is difficult because there's so many different things you can say but you could say that the shaded region, the, there could be houses there. Um, you could say that the road AB and road AC may not be perfectly straight. For instance, um, the road from A to B might kind of come like this. And so actually we could um, shade the region a lot more with it being closer to AB, for instance. It's going to take a while to get rid of now, isn't it? <laughs> um, you could say a whole load of things. As long as you've understood what the question's asking, the key is may not. So whenever it says may not, it means that you don't have to um, keep your explanation from the information you given to you in the question. You can be creative. Now, my, my advice to you is just keep it really simple. Like, my answer to this question would be that... Um, there may be already buildings that are in the shaded region or the land might not be available uh, anywhere in that shaded region and that's absolutely fine that would always get you the marks um, so I hope you've uh, found today's video useful uh, this is not an easy one to do um, on uh, on the screen um, but hopefully I've done enough to kind of show you how you would do it if you've had a pair of compasses um, and a ruler in front of you um, if you want to see more from us, obviously go to the website on maths.com. Uh, if the summer school's still on, please join it and uh, join the hundreds of people who already have. 
which is amazing because it's only been running, I think, three days. Um, and if you want to see more from us, like this video, click subscribe, and you'll always be up to date. And thank you very much. Thank you.